All right. Well, here we go again. So I just made a uh, video here and I was not recording. You ever done that? I've been doing video since 2005 or so, having worked with uh, great bodybuilders like Lee Priest and Fitness and Figure Pro Monica Brandt and Fitness, Miss Fitness Olympia, Adela Garcia, and a lot of other video projects. And uh, boy, I hate when that happens. <laughs> so I just made a video here about Georgia Mall. And what's okay, we'll do it again, and it'll go a lot smoother and more efficient. So here we are on my Seabreeze Hercules YouTube page. And I hope you guys are doing fantastic. And I hope you are having a wonderful 2023. Here we are in January. And so we're going to keep these videos going. And what I'm finding is that the more I interact with you guys, fans of Steve's, admirers, people that are just starting to get to know Steve, you know, we all share the information and we can learn a lot more. We can be motivated by Steve and um, maybe a little of that magic will rub off on us. So Tim K posed a question. He says, who has the original roles of film? He's talking about Hercules. There must still be material that wasn't in the film or behind the scenes footage that wasn't in the film. Are there statements about Steve from his film partners? How can you get it? Well, Tim, that's a great question. I don't have the answer, but I haven't really thought about that. Almost embarrassed to say, yes, there must be extra film from Hercules, film that did not make it into the movie. So, you know, the first thing you do is you go on Google and you type that in. You go on YouTube and you check because you never know. There may be somebody may have uploaded it. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I'm assuming Tim probably has. I say, hi, Tim. That's a great question. I would assume the original film would be with the Italian director Pietro Francisci estate. Francisci's estate. Google shows that Pietro died in 1977. So what, 45 years ago, 46 years ago. If there are any Italian fans here on YouTube on this community page who might help us contact Pietro's family, it would be much appreciated. Because that's the great thing about the internet and social media. You can get answers to questions like this right away. You know, sometimes the same day, sometimes within a day or two. Tim then says, thank you, Scott. One more question. Do you know how Steve was doing in the last hours of his life? Yeah, I do know how he was doing. He had lost a lot of weight. He did not have his appetite. I'm assuming he had pain in his stomach. Uh, he thought it was an ulcer because he had experienced an ulcer during the movie A Long Ride from Hell, which he produced, directed, and acted in in the late 60s. And because of that workload, he got a lot of stress and he got an uh, ulcer. So I'm assuming that Steve felt that type of pain during the last hours of his life. Uh, I know that he had an appetite for certain things like McDonald's chocolate shakes. I know that during that hospital stay, in late April 2000, that Steve had indicated to George Helmer, who was there in the room with him, that once he got out, Steve, he wanted to go to McDonald's. They had some sort of breakfast special. So, you know, Steve typically had an appetite. He typically had a big appetite. I've talked to a lot of people, whether it be George or Dave Dowling or others who have told me stories about Steve and his appetite. Another one comes to mind is my friend Barry, Barry O'Connor. Um, so I think he was in pain. I think he was probably frustrated that, you know, he couldn't fix himself because Steve knew his body better than anyone. You know, he was really an expert in nutrition. His mom had taught him about nutrition. And then, you know, he was around guys like Jack LaLanne and Ed Yarick. And, you know, George Eiferman, and they talked about nutrition all the time. They, 
bodybuilding in those days was about health. It wasn't about putting illegal things or foreign things in your body. It was about putting pure food in your body and then seeing what the effects were. How did your body respond? How did you feel? How did it help with your bodybuilding? And then uh, Tim says, did Steve have to suffer? Well, uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I hope he didn't suffer. Uh, I know that when he died, it was just instant. Uh, George Helmer talked about helping Steve back into his room, back to the bed. And George had him under one side of him under his armpit. And George was looking in Steve's eyes. And the next moment, Steve was gone. George has said it was like Zeus zapping the spirit out of Hercules's body. So I don't think he suffered at that point. Uh, I think he suffered because he was frustrated that he had to be in the hospital. He'd rather be on his ranch, mending fences, taking care of his horses, taking care of his animals. And it's been said that Steve was never happier than when the horses were fed and the ranch was in order. So that probably really bothered Steve, the fact that he wasn't able to carry on in his normal manner. Did he die alone? Well, he died with uh, George and uh, another gentleman in the room. And was he in pain? Well, we just covered that. How long was he in the hospital? I believe it was just a couple of days. He was scheduled for exploratory surgery. And that's when they discovered lymphoma. The doctor came in, said, I got good news, bad news. Uh, the bad news is that you have lymphoma, but it's not uh, all in your organs. And I think with radiation, we can cure it and you'll be fine. So just a couple of days with Steve in the hospital. Unfortunately, he never left. And then Tim says, here in Germany, you couldn't read anything about Steve's last days. When I found out about his death years later, how did you find out about his death? Tim, did you read George's book, A Moment in Time, or did you find out about his death on message boards? I'd be interested to know how you found out. He says, I was totally shocked and still am that he had to die so early at 74. I agree. Steve wanted to live to be 100. And then Tim says, I'll be in Italy in June and I'm trying to get in touch with Georgia Mall. Well, Tim, do you know Georgia Mall already? Are you just reaching out to her? Either way is fine. Uh, sure, I speak for everyone here listening and watching that we'd love for you to get in touch with Georgia Mall, and we'd love to know how she's doing. I know that she's in her mid-80s, which is hard to imagine because when you think of the movie that she did with Steve, she is so young and full of energy and just a beautiful woman. So, yes, we would love to hear that she is still in great health. And then Tim says, I have Italian friends who are working for me. Thank you, Tim. Well, thank you, Tim, from us, because, you know, we are huge Steve Reeves fans. And like Elvis Presley, you know, we just can't get enough of hearing about Steve because the guy was incredible and all the things that he did. And, um, you know, if you can figure out how to get a hold of Pietro's family, you know, two things. See if you can do that for us and find out if there is any footage. You know, a lot of people just, you know, they have kids and then they have kids and that, that stuff doesn't really mean anything to them. So it could be just locked up somewhere waiting for someone like you to find out but yeah, it's back here. We have it. And uh, we'd love to let you see it. I mean, you just never know. People move on. Um, and then if you can reach out to Georgia Mall and let us know, we'd love to hear about her. And of course, you know, if she's able to and wants to, we'd love to uh, have an, a video interview with her. I'd be honored to do that because we're trying to keep these people's memories alive their great work that they did their movies alive so that we get the details down and the details are accurate because you know a lot of the things i'm doing i'm reading books whether they're from george or 
you know, parts of Deborah's book. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, and a lot of it's speculation. We just have to fill in the blanks. So the more that we can get Georgia Mall, uh, guys like Dave Dupree, who has emerged here on my YouTube community page, Dave Dupree, famous bodybuilder. Steve Reeves is his favorite. And he's been, you know, watching the videos. And so he and I have been communicating, not as much as I'd like, uh, because he has a wealth of information on Steve's training. And uh, Dave Dupree trained at Yarick's gym. And so there's another, you know, person that, you know, we want to try to get the details down. Um, it's very important. All right, we're going to move on to the next segment. Thank you very much, Tim. I'm looking forward to hearing back from you. He, he does a lot of things, including this bench uh, that he, he actually um, cut and re-welded. And what he did is this is a sit-up bench, basically, uh, for doing the sit-ups. But what he did is he built this little platform on here. And by changing all the angles, this is what he used for doing his um, cable workouts. Uh, so he would have the cables in there and do uh, bicep curls and pullovers and different things like that. But he, he had a method of, of how he he took something and said, well, this doesn't have the right angles to it. And he would alter the, uh, the machine to, to fit what he thought would be the right thing to do. So that was George Helmer uh, at Joe Vitale's home gym in the mid 2000s. And George had come down from California and had set up the Universal Multistation Centurion that Joe Vitale purchased. And right there is a bench that came with it. And you can see that wood platform and the brackets. And so you can tell there was some welding going on there. And when you look at other parts of the Universal, there were areas, for instance, on the lat pull-down bar, Steve had welded a little um, holder for the lat pull-down bar because he was so tall and he would hit himself in the head. So I don't know if I have that in this section. So he would take the bar, which just hung from a chain, and he would place the bar in that bracket higher so that it wouldn't hit him in the head as he, uh, Steve, was walking around the Universal. So I was checking out Steve's uh, bike the other day, just really closely looking at components. And, you know, these handlebars are not stock handlebars that came on the bicycle. So here is another example of something that Steve tweaked. I mean, you can see that right there obviously is, doesn't look like a stock piece of tubing. And then when you look closer, the tape job, same thing. The foam grips, same thing. <clears throat> At first you might miss this, but upon closer inspection, you can tell that these are not the stock handlebars. So I believe and, and to get at them, you just unscrew here and then you can just slide off handlebars and put in the new ones. So I believe that Steve upgraded this team specialized bike, Stump Jumper, mid 1980s with this uh, handlebar that he made himself, that he welded, you can see right here. And then as I was looking, at some other stuff of Steve's, this V-bar handle that I've talked about before in another video, looks real similar to that tubing right there. The V-bar handle diameter is a little bit larger than the handle bikes, but this is definitely a homemade V-bar handle that Steve used with his Universal, and we still use this in my garage gym. So here's another example of a welding job that Steve did, the V-bar handle, the handlebars, and I'll show you what a stock set of handlebars looked like with this bike. And then we were just talking about the Universal 
multi-station Centurion, and this is the lat pull-down handle from that uh, multi-station universal uh, weight machine that Steve used. So this is the actual handle right here. And I still use this uh, with other things. I use it with bands and stuff like that. And so when you look at the top of this, this all looks like it was, you know, how it came stock from the manufacturer. And uh, this would hang. And so he had a little holder that he would put this in so that it didn't hit his head. So there you go. Steve was just always tinkering and upgrading, and I'm sure the welding skills came in handy on his ranch, you know, whether it was um, building things for the horses, like repairing the, the pens or the fences. I'm sure there was always something that needed to be fixed. So, you know, the guy was much more than just a bodybuilder weightlifter. He uh, was very capable in a lot of different ways. All right, we're going to move on to the next section. Okay, so recently I heard from my friend Joseph Matriciano. Joseph Matriciano. <laughs> and good old Italian name, huh? He says, hello, Scott. Happy New Year. Hope all is well with you and your family. I've been enjoying your Steve Reeves video and community postings he's talking about on the YouTube community page. Very interesting. Keep them coming. Attached are some JPEGs. I thought you might like. Best wishes, Joe. And uh, so I, I think I posted these already, but let's take another look. Wow, look at the color on here. And, um, you know, Steve looks fantastic. And I always tell people, you got to remember, when Steve came on the scene... The actors were built like James Stewart, Rock Hudson, et cetera, and so on. So he, when he appeared in Hercules and later on the other movies, he had broken new ground, new territory. And these other actors that I just named, they wouldn't even do a movie with him because they didn't want to look bad. So just an amazing trailblazer. And there's one of the most famous scenes right there in Hercules. And there you go. So Joe sent those to me, and I believe I've already shared those. This was taken at the 1996 Steve Reeves International Society gathering. And uh, this is Dave Dowling on the far right. Of course, Dave co-authored uh, Steve's book, a legacy in film, his legacy in film uh, that Joe Helmer co-authored. Fantastic book, if you can still get it. goes into great detail about all Steve's films and movies, uh, TV shows. And then this is Joe right here in the white shirt, and this is Joe's lovely wife. I don't know who the other folks are here, but uh, yeah, I wanted to know if Joe was there, and there, and there he was. He says, yes, I'm third from the right with a white S-R-I-S t-shirt. My wife, Peggy, Dave Dowling. That photo was taken in 1996 at the AA used, uh, Mr. America contest where Steve made his first public appearance for George Helmer and S-R-I-S, Steve Reeves International Society. It was the first time I ever met Steve. Great memories. Here's a few pictures from my salad days when I placed third out of 25th uh, at the AAU Mr. Power Contest in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I'm going to put old Joe on the spot. If you send me a picture, you got to watch it because I'll probably post it. Look at Joe. What a great structure he has. So this is 1973 AAU, a contest in New Jersey. Great structure for bodybuilding, as I told Joe. And then here's another picture right here in the blue trunks. He took third out of over 20 contestants. That's really, really good. First place must have been right here. Well, to me, Joe looks better than first place. And I understand this guy's not posing, but still. And then this must have been second place on the far left there. Well, thanks for sharing those pictures, Joe. And I told him he had a great structure and to place third out of 25th. And this is what I love is to get 
communication, emails, uh, letters, notes from Steve Reeves fans. And this is one way that I've been able to learn so much about Steve. So, Joe, hope I didn't put you on the spot too much. But hey, you know us bodybuilders, we always like attention, right? You look fantastic. Thanks for sharing. And that's it, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.